when we were organizing for Vienna and we wanted to have the tribunal, our idea was that women, and I don't say women, I say feminists, but I say feminists because I know that all women are never going to agree, not because I'm trying to make every woman call herself a feminist, but the women we were working with, the ones that I would call feminists, in every region had to define what were the key issues they wanted to bring up from their local and regional situations to be in the tribunal. And then we at CWGL and with our other lead organizations organized that into five themes that we felt reflected that. So what we were trying to do was to embody the notion that the issues come, as you said, from the local work, the local organizing. But what we needed to do in Vienna was to show what were the common threads in those issues. And we ended up with, not too surprising, a, you know, a section on domestic violence, on women and war and conflict, on women in economic situations, uh, et cetera. But it was very important that we try to find that thread so that there was a way to build solidarity with each other. And I think that's where human rights has been so important and so useful uh, to our work. And I would say one of the great uh, enduring legacies from Vienna is that women can't be left out of human rights considerations in the same way they could 40, 30 years ago. That doesn't mean that women's needs are being met or that these issues are solved. And we know there's probably as much violence against women in the world as there ever was. But you can't ignore it anymore. And there are strategies for finding ways to address it. Oh, and that, to me, is what we have to work for. How do we find the common threads that will build those strategies across lines and particularly when two or more countries are interfacing with each other. But as you were speaking, I remembered this moment uh, that, that was so clear to me. When we had decided to, to focus the 16 Days campaign on militarism, we had this huge meeting and probably about 250 people. It was during the Commission on the Status of Women. And we had 250 people in the room and I said, what do you think? Can we, can we do this? I mean, does this make sense? And, and there were women that were from uh, a part of Pakistan that was in the middle of, of uh, total militarism and, and there was a huge increase in violence and, uh, and the woman from there said, please, we need, we need focus on this. And then there was another woman, um, I think from Uganda, who said, you know, there was war and all these guns are here and now they're being used. And so there were different people just saying different things. And then there was a woman, and this is so clear to me, there was a woman from Scotland who said, you know, you go ahead and do this militarism thing. We, we're just going to stick with the old, you know, uh, violence in the home. And then in the middle of it, she just raised her hand and said, wait a minute, my father works in the factory that produces those guns. I can join this. And it was that moment where it was like, wait a minute, we have something in common. And so I now realize that every time my dad's going to work to build those guns, someone else is getting killed somewhere else. And, and that was just, I mean, and it wasn't planned. I mean, I didn't think that it was going to work that way. But it, that was kind of the genesis of that, of that campaign, was that meeting in which different people realized that there was something in common that was structural, right? It wasn't necessarily cultural, it was structural. Thank you.